Okay guys, we will be using this Navic sound level meter today. Okay, let's first turn our power on. Let's go ahead and put it into, uh, let's do slow reacting. And that's decibels, DBA, okay. Uh, what I will be doing is changing out a condenser fan motor because the bearings are bad. This is a variable speed motor. These are notorious for going bad. There are a few reasons why they go bad. Uh, one of the reasons, excuse the mess of the van. I gotta do some cleaning. Um, they are a variable speed motor, they're single phase. They ramp up and down with a uh, MotorMaster P66 controller that regulates your head pressure. Um, those motors, um, if they are not ramped up 100%, the amp draw is very high. They heat up. They receive air from the condenser to cool them down as well. Okay, so if that condenser is dirty, that lack of airflow, lack of cooling. So that is another thing that can cause those motors to overheat. Um, I think personally it's a bad design, but um, I don't know. The three phase motors that are either on or off, I never. I, I changed maybe one or two in my entire career in this field. So very rarely does that go bad. It's typically these single phase motors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside, shut off the indoor air handler. Then I'm going to go ahead and shut down the main power outside and then extract this old motor. So let's get started. Okay, guys, go ahead. I'm going to shut her down. Let that pump down. Let me listen for a compressor. It's pumping down. Pumping down. It's actually pretty well insulated. Now what I'm doing is I'm letting the compressor pump down. It shuts a liquid line solenoid valve, pumping all the refrigerant out of the evaporator so you don't have a uh, liquid um, slug back on the uh, compressor because you cannot compress a liquid almost there. As soon as it makes that low pressure switch, it'll shut down. There it goes. Make sure both compressors are off. Bam. Now we can go outside, shut off the condenser. Okay, guys, next we'll lock out and tag out the disconnect. leave that key there. If somebody cuts that lock off, they're getting fired. Safety first. Okay, now we can go ahead, open our electrical compartment. I'm going to pull the fuses on there so we don't have any electricity 100%, but first I'm going to check it. Okay, guys, after verifying we have no power, we can go ahead and pour our fuses. Get a good grip on them. One. Man, it's been a while since M Bastard's been out of there. Oh, man. Things are tight. Okay, now all our power that could possibly be going to either one of our motors is now gone. So power can only stop here if for some reason somebody kicks it on. Now we go ahead, take off our cover, loosen our motor, and unwire, take it out. guys I always like to try to save the old blade if I can we'll dab will do you you can take your allen key you got stick it right in the side loosen her up they should have put anti-seize on this but they did not and the thing is that was nice that Liebert had created they use these little black boots that go right over top and kind of protect it, but I like using anti-seize. So I'm gonna pry up underneath there with a screwdriver. There we go. There we go. So, but 
that could also throw the balance off if the blade is bent. I will set that inside as a backup, but I did get a brand new one just in case I couldn't get this old one off. Now we can go ahead, spray a little lubricant on these bolts here, okay? I'm gonna put a piece of wood up underneath here, so in case, worst case scenario, the motor would somehow slip out of my hands or fall, it won't hit, it, hit that coil, because that is refrigerant in there at this time. Okay guys, some people think wiring is tough. Yes, it can be, but as long as you pay attention, you can't really screw it up. Now this old motor, I have to determine, is this high voltage or is it low voltage? This is a dual voltage motor, okay? 208, 230 is one side, if we want to run it that way, or 460, okay? Well, how do we know? Well, let's see here. Okay, we got yellow and brown. Let's look on here. Is yellow, brown connected anywhere? Oh, there it is, BR and Y, yellow, brown. Okay, it's connected with a wire nut. Okay, connected. Now, we have white and yellow to one of the main leads coming in. Okay, white and yellow. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> red and white. Okay, red and white go to a red coming in. So, we can go red, white, WR to R. There we go. Then, let's see what else. We have a single strand orange, okay? And going to the main power orange. There we go, orange, okay? So we're gonna be low voltage here. And then you got purple, which purple should be but just by itself, which yes it is. It's just by itself, purple. P and P, okay? So that's relatively simple. Um, they are labeled in here if you really look They'll be labeled on the wires. So they'll, they'll say either uh, T1, T4, T12, T7, T6, whatever. But there's different ways companies like to uh, label things. So that's just one way, okay? All right, I gotta get back out. That's right. That's right. Okay guys, they give you a rain shield and a capacitor, so that's pretty nice. Okay, so, and as you can see, I did put something underneath the motor because you do not want something like this or worse happening, okay? You don't want that. Um, I always mark my motors, okay, just corners so I know right where to go because, believe it or not, you can slide that motor a good inch, it looks like, either way, so your fan will hit if you're off too much, okay? So anyways, um, I got those all tightened up here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on my rain shield. Uh, that's nothing more than just ripping it out of this package. Okay, three arms. Um, there is a little clamp on there. If you could squeeze that in, that would be great. Um, sometimes you can actually just get them to go over top and then you just, you just start hitting them down. So, but I got to set the phone down to do this. Um, after I get, you're going to get that down as low as you can without touching, okay? Then once that's done, then you can go ahead and throw your blade on. But I'm going to throw some anti-seize on there too. Then change our cap and get her back on up and running. Okay, guys, you can generally see where your old set screws were, okay? So that'll get you close, okay? But always try, try to judge off the old one right where that's at, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of anti-seize on here and then slide her blade over. There we go. Let's go grab a blade. Okay guys, after when you have that blade on, you wanna go ahead and just give a spin. Make sure it does not touch, okay? You wanna make sure it's slightly above to pull that airflow right up out, okay? I'm gonna throw a little bit of anti-seize on here just for good measure, just a little bit. It doesn't really get wet up underneath there because Liebert likes to use, where did I put, there it is, this little boot. Put that, there we go, and got some vibration. That's that channel design, it's 
got the leverage on that factor. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this cover back on here after I make sure all my tools are out. And I'm gonna throw in this capacitor. Okay guys, next we're changing out that fan motor um, capacitor. Okay, here's the brand new one. It's reading 30 microfarad. So, you go on your voltmeter, set it to ohms. Okay, ohm value. Okay, we should be reading resi resistance of some sort, which we are. Now we'll check microfarad. We should be reading about 30. 30.3, so we're good, okay? So we're gonna be changing that out, we'll just do wire for wire. The old one's still good, so you can keep it as a spare, but I always recommend changing capacitors with any motor that has a capacitor. Now that is only single phase. They do not make a three phase motor that's like that. So, but you can keep that as a spare. So, kind of get you out of hot water in the middle of the night, you know what I mean? I used to demo equipment years ago, and I would keep spare parts. Uh, a little off topic, I don't know if anybody else gets incredibly nauseous by the smell of uh, cigarettes, but um, for some reason, it really gets on my nerves that somebody's standing about 20 feet away and it's just drifting over here. All I can say is, if you get into heating and air conditioning, stay out of the bars and stay away from cigarettes. You gotta breathe. You have to breathe to be in this field. You gotta climb ladders and carry equipment. It'll work better anyways. You'll save a lot of money staying out of both of those. Stay away from cigarettes and smoking and any other drugs. I'm gonna keep this one. There's already a, somebody left a spare in here. Okay guys, we can go ahead and put our fuses back in. Man, them are tough. Wow. Oh, geez, oh man. I'm gonna set down my phone for this. Them things are tight, everybody. Real tight. Okay, let's go turn on that indoor unit. Okay guys, before turning on the indoor unit, we gotta turn on power outside. I do have the access panel left open at this time because I wanna check amp draw. Uh, the motor for low voltage, which is 208, 230 volt, they were, it says 4.8 amps or less. So as long as this motor ramps up all the way, the amps will stay down. If it modulates because the P66 fan cycling control, then the amps go up. Okay. It's booting up. I'm going to go ahead and press this to on. And I'm going to go outside, wait for it to kick on. I double push that, that's weird. Okay guys, we are back up and running. Hear how quiet? Remember it was up around 90? Nice and quiet now. Let's set this down. Three point four is the highest I'm seeing, and it's rated up to four point eight. We're all good, and we're in the right direction, nice and quiet. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this, uh, the main fan that works off of a thermostat, and you're going to watch this motor that works strictly off of pressure. Off the P sixty six goes right up on your tubing. Okay, I'm going to relieve that pressure with this other fan kicking on. Watch this. Here we go. I'm going to turn this down. This fan will slow down and stop. 
reason why, because that works off of pressure, okay? And we lower the head pressure by getting rid of that heat. So, there you guys go. Hope you're learning. HVAC explained, everybody.